welcome to our Advent Sunday Holy Communion this morning. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. Oh, oh, praise, praise the you, name praise of the Lord. Lord. Do you remain standing as we sing. we thank you for uh, this time of Advent as we wait in a sure and certain hope of your coming. Help us to be those who live uh, in a patient but active waiting for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do be seated. Just a couple of notices. Uh, you should already have had uh, your 
November notices. We're almost into December notices. So if you haven't got them by email and picked them up, there are still some at the back for you. Um, a massive, massive thank you to those who helped and prepared and were present um, at our Christmas cracker this afternoon, uh, this afternoon, yesterday afternoon. Um, and obviously Rosemary isn't around for us to especially help her for bringing that together, but we know she was a big part of that um, as well. But yeah, thank you to everyone. It was such a lovely atmosphere. It was a great way to kind of kick off Advent weekend. Um, and to lead people hopefully into being around and uh, engaging with this period of Advent and Christmas, particularly from our local community. There are some more invitations. This is the invitation heavy part of the year. We recognize that and we're really grateful for those who do go around the streets. So there are some more at the back. There are three flyers in each pack. And that is because we have one for Blue Christmas, uh, which is on the 11th of December. Um, we have one which advertises our carol service and then all the back, on the back our other Christmas services, our, ad, our carol services on the 18th of December. Um, and we have one that is advertising our extra warm space. So um, obviously tea in the afternoon is registered as a warm space, but we're doing a... Um, uh, a special one from the months of December to February, which um, Joan is hosting in our garden room on Wednesday afternoons. So we want to let our community know about that, um, if it would be really helpful for them to have a, a warm space to go to so they don't necessarily have to heat their own spaces at this time. Um, first, I can see you there, Robert, but I just want to invite Jeff to um, say something about the Christmas sing-along. As you'll all know by now, we're having a Christmas sing-along on the 4th of December at 4 p.m. And um, it's a very informal event. I want you to come along and enjoy yourselves and uh, enjoy singing some different carols and listen to a few bits of poetry and uh, generally... We'll have some mulled wine and it will be quite pleasant, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and uh, just to say we're having rehearsal at 12 o'clock today after the service for those that want to have a run through and next Saturday at 2 p.m. So if you can um, just let everybody know that we're having this and invite them along and please come and just enjoy your start of Christmas. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, I'm in charge of refreshments for the Christmas sing-along, um, but I am going to need a little bit of help. So if anyone is willing to give me a little bit of help kind of prepping and serving refreshments, um, can you come and see me after the service? That would be really helpful. Thank you. And I, I think that's everything on my notices. Um, just to say that the Advent prayer book for this Advent is out. Some of you will have received it um, by email. And if you're happy to use it by online on your email, then that's great. But if you would prefer a hard copy, there are some on the table at the back. So do make use of them this Advent. Um, we also have... Um, a leaflet which is at the back I think where the liturgies are um, if you're interested in picking one of those up which just lets you know a little bit about how our pastoral care works. Um, we're really aware that sometimes it would be good to have a visit, um, have more kind of in-depth prayer about something than, than we can do in a Sunday morning service. Um, just to have a chat about something which might be going on in your life um, and you would like to have um, a visit either from the pastoral team uh, or from myself. Uh, this leaflet kind of gives a little bit of an outline as to how to access that kind of care. Um, so hopefully it's helpful. Uh, do pick it up um, if you'd like that. And I just want to encourage you, there are really lots of ways to access pastoral care. Um, in the church. So if you would like that, if that's something that you feel would be helpful for you, um, do make use of that because we're very willing uh, to come and walk alongside you, especially in sometimes some of the more difficult times of life. So pick that up at the back. I will send it around by email as well.
Robert. Good morning. Two things from me this morning. Firstly, thank you for those who responded to my request for availability for the rotors for the Sundays in December, but also for the things that are going on at, in the evenings and on Christmas Eve. I've done an initial rotor. There are three gaps on it, so there are, I'm, I'm looking for people to fill the gaps. It's up on the board at the back there. If you are able to help with any of the three that are indicated as to be decided, or blank, <laughs> please let me know. Secondly, the fellowship group will be meeting on Tuesday as usual. We are uh, looking at Jesus' teaching on wealth, as explained by Peter. And unfortunately, Joan is not well, and I'm not sure she'll be well enough for Tuesday. But fortunately, John and Helen Slaughter have agreed to host it on Tuesday evening at 7.30. You don't have to travel to North Allerton. <laughs> they will be round the corner in Adderley Road. So Adderley Road, 7.30, Tuesday for the Fellowship Group. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. John, just wave your hand in case anyone... So do speak to John afterwards and Helen here if, um, if you need to know where they live for that. Okay, let's quiet in our hearts. We say together, faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as part of bringing ourselves uh, to the Lord and confessing and uh, bringing all that we are, we will light our Advent candle. Um, and I have a special helper, I think, who's going to come up now. Yes, brilliant. Um, and we'll pray this prayer together just as we invite God to be part of our Advent season. Brilliant. Can you light this candle? You have to press it and keep it pressed down. Wonderful. Takes a while for it to light. If you come round here and we'll pray. I'll take the letter. Come round here and we'll pray this prayer together. Would you be able to read that? Yeah. Okay. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king. Be born in our hearts at Christmas. Be king of our lives, lives today. Be king of our lives today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You can take your seat. <laughs> well done. Wonderful. So our first candle is lit. And so a voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Turn to us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So you can remain seating as we have our first reading. First reading is Romans 13, 11 to the end. The day is near, and do this understanding present time. The hour is already come for you to walk 
up, up from the slumber, because our sal salvation is near. Now then, we have, when we have the f first believed, the night is nearly over. The day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us believe decently, as in the daytime, not cursing or drunkenness, nor in sexual immorality and debauchery, but in decency, but in decision and jealousy. Rather clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. These are the words of the Lord. And uh, if you're comfortable, please do stand as we have our gospel reading. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah. The gospel reading is taken from Matthew chapter 24 and can be found on page 994 beginning at verse 36. The day and hour unknown. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. But they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Loving God, come and be with us as we hear your word for us today. May you seal it in our hearts by your spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So sleep is good. If you've ever been with a child or an adult uh, who is overtired, and you know that they just need sleep and all will be well, you know that sleep is good. Or when you've been ill and it's brought home to you how much our bodies need sleep in order to rest, replenish, recover, heal, you know that sleep is good. Sometimes, too much sleep is a sign of something else. Sometimes it's a sign that we've gone into avoidance mode. We're not really tired physically, but being asleep is better than having to deal with the thing we're avoiding dealing with. Sometimes it's time to wake up. In the reading from Romans this morning, in the particular translation I was using, it says, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. This is what St. Paul says to the Roman church he is writing to, and it is what he says to us today in this place at this time to this particular people. 
because this is the message of Advent. It's not rocket science, as it were. It's the message of Advent every year. (laughs) To wake up and to do our waiting actively. Now is not a time for sleeping while we wait. Because we do not know when the waiting will be ended and the thing we wait for, the person we wait for, will have arrived. And we cannot miss it. It may seem, as I've said, this is the message of Advent every year, it may seem a silly message or a slightly over-the-top message. After all, Jesus has already come. We wait symbolically in Advent for Christmas Day. And, well, we know when that is. And yes, we also know, maybe in our heads, that we wait not symbolically, for Jesus to come again. We wait for the second coming of Jesus, when all things will be put right. And Advent reminds us each year that we are still waiting. And it can be hard to wait and be reminded every year that we're still waiting. It can be hard to wait and to believe, and to keep awake. What does it mean to live our lives as followers of Jesus in what might feel like a perpetual state of waiting? What does it look like to be awake in our waiting? You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. This is what St. Paul says to us, and Jesus says it to us too in that reading. To stay awake, we don't know. But we do know it's nearer now than it was. Jesus also reminds us in other parts of the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is already among you. In these between days, of Jesus' first coming and his second, the kingdom is already here and not quite here. It is now and not yet. It is among us and it eludes us. So what does it look like to be those who are awake in the waiting? It looks like being those who are living as if the kingdom of God is already among us and is being built by us. It looks like living as transformed people, living as if the waiting is over and as if that has something to do with us as if what you do matters, as if what you are doing makes a difference. What does that look like in your life? In the places where God has placed you in particular, in the different communities, the schools and the offices, and the streets, the bus stops, the shops. What does that look like in the place where you are? Living as a transformed people, 
as if the waiting is over and as if that has something to do with us. Living as if what you do matters. As if what you are doing makes a difference. What does it look like? As if we are the hope of a new kingdom on earth. As if God has left it in our hands. As if we are the people who God has risked it with. Mother Julian of Norwich puts it like this. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, Yours are the eyes, you are his body. So we're going to take a moment now to listen to this uh, being sung. And I encourage you to think as you hear, as you listen to this, to hear God speak to you about what this looks like in your world and in your particular communities. Do you remember how the words go to the song that we did today? Christ has no body but yours.
You know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Amen. Please do stand as we sing. we say together what we believe. We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated as we have our prayers read for today. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, hear us. Lord. Strengthen, Luther, our Bishop, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, hear us. Bless and guide Charles our King, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common, common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, hear us. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ according to your promises. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. And Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering at this time through having no money to buy food for their families or heating for their homes. Lord, we pray that they get help and we thank you so much, Lord, for all the food banks around the country and all the work that is going on in the churches and the, the places that people can come to keep warm, Father. Thank you so much for all this. So rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so if you're comfortable to do so, please stand as we share Christ's peace with one another. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share Christ's peace with one another. And receive bread and wine, or bread alone, or a prayer of blessing. Look upon us in mercy 
not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. The Lord is here. I'll just wait. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son, for when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. the source of all holiness. Grant that, that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup 
and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your will be done. Oh, your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we join in this ending prayer with the words in bold. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come, Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, Lord Jesus. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. So Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, lead you in the light and darkness of your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Do you join in our final song? Join the 